story of a home circle held in Middlesbrough, which produced the most amazing physical phenomena. The medium, Minnie Harrison, was a very rare and exceptional physical medium, and she was used by the spirit world to materialise hundreds of ectoplasmic spirit forms. Her son, Tom Harrison, was a member of that circle, and during the last 30 years, he has travelled the country extensively, giving talks and lectures about the circle, and bringing health and comfort to many hundreds of people. Much of this story is filmed on location with Tom, as he gives his talks in houses, churches and lecture halls. We had to contend with traffic noise, karaoke evenings, disco nights, and many other noisy intrusions. Because of this, some of the quality of the film is not as good as it would have been had it been filmed in a studio setting. However, we felt that the atmosphere that is generated when Tom gives one of his lectures was well worth capturing on film. I do hope you agree. Tom, hello. Hello, Pat. The circle started in 1946 after you were demobbed from the army, didn't it? That's right. Would you like to tell us about it? Delighted. I was demobbed in March 1946 after serving seven years in the army. Uh, my mum and dad and Doris and I went round to Sid and Gaddis's on a Saturday night purely as a social call. But after two or three weeks, Sid said one night, why don't we have a circle? So we said, why not? We were spiritualists, and my mother by that time had developed into a trance medium. We sat uh, in Sid and Gladys's sitting room behind their shop, um, which is an old shop as you can see, with uh, Sid in his Sunday best, and his dad standing there, Joe, good character. And my mother was the medium at the time. I say by then she'd be about 51. And she had developed into becoming uh, into a trance medium, a deep control trance medium, which meant that she completely went to sleep. She had no idea what was happening. Uh, we had to tell her afterwards what had happened, what had occurred. And the four members of our family, uh, as you can see, uh, I'm standing there with, um, with a bit of hair in those days, and then Doris is on my left, um, she was my first wife. My dad, who was known as Tosha, is sitting in front uh, of Doris, and then my mother is sitting next to my dad. The other two members at the beginning, when we started sitting, making six, were Sid and Gladys Shipman, uh, as you can see, who were our hosts and we simply sat in their living room behind that shop that you've seen. Within a, a short time, Mrs. Hildred, Gladys's mother, joined us um, because she was uh, interested. Her husband, Sam, had passed away in December 45, only a few months earlier, and she was interested to know what was happening uh, with Sam. And then, after about seven or eight months, Mr. Britton Jones joined us uh, he was a surgeon and was the superintendent of the Middlesbrough General Hospital where Doris served her time as a nurse. So that was the eight of us uh, at a later stage. After all these years, how can you remember the details of everything that happened in the circle so precisely? Actually, it's very simple, Pat. See, I don't rely on my memory. I have two books here in which I recorded just brief records after every sitting, I made notes of what happened so that I have it all in the books. And that's what's important, that you have the exact, precise records. Yes, indeed. When you give your talks, some of the audience may be very knowledgeable about spiritualism and True. psychic phenomena, yeah. and others will know absolutely nothing. How do you cope with that? Oh, very simple. I, at the very beginning, I simply give an explanation of the difference between mental phenomena and physical phenomena. That's all. For those of you who know very little about psychic phenomena, particularly physical psychic phenomena, what you're going to see tonight and what you're going to hear about, um, you may find, well, sometimes impossible. It'll certainly be mind-boggling 
to some of you if you don't know anything about it. Uh, and sometimes people even think it's fraudulent because it is so rare, extremely rare. But let me assure you that everything you see tonight, everything you hear about tonight, happened. And I was there. I'm not telling you something about somebody else that somebody else has told me about. I experienced all the things you're going to hear about between 1946 and 1954 in our home circle in Middlesbrough with my mother, Minnie Harrison, as the medium. So it's all fact that you will hear tonight, okay? Now, as I said, at the end of the talk, don't hesitate. You can come back and ask me questions. That'll be fine. I'm talking about a home circle, but let me explain the difference between mental phenomena and physical phenomena, for those of you who may not understand. Mental psychic phenomena is where the medium, and the medium is nothing more than a television set or a radio set. Bear in mind, that's all they are. They're only mediums for picking up the radio waves and the television waves going through the air. Now, a medium is a person who picks up the spiritual vibrations, the psychic energy from either you or from the spirit people who are around us. And they are around us all the time. They're here and they're with us. They don't interfere with our lives. They don't tell us what we have to do. But they're there to help us if we need it. In the same way that we go and ask um, other people if we want help about something. Well, we can ask our spirit friend the same way as you could. Now, the medium who is a mental medium, only he or she hears or sees the actual happening. In other words, clair clairvoyance, which you may have heard of, they see clearly, they see spirit people. They see them either objectively or they see them kind of a little picture in their mind. Clear audience, clear hearing, they hear the spirit people talking to them. They can hear the messages. Right? But only the medium knows that, senses it. With physical phenomena, it happens in the room, in the circle, a group like we are. It could happen if it happened here. Everybody in the room sees it and hears it. It is absolutely physical, which you will see on the photographs I'm going to show you later. Now, my mother was brought up in a spiritualist family, was a medium all her life in various ways. But by the time I had been, was demobbed from the army in 1946, after the World War II, she had developed into a trance medium. Trance medium is where the person goes to sleep, deep trance. They literally just go to sleep and a spirit person takes over and uses their body and speaks to you entirely different person, a spirit person. That is trans control. My mother was controlled by her sister in spirit, Mrs. Abbott, and Ag to us, and you'll hear about and Ag quite a bit, and you'll see and Ag on the photographs, who was a medium when she was here too. She was a medium in London, but she also had her own home circle, the trumpet circle. I'll explain about the trumpet as I'm coming to it but she had the trumpet circle. And she passed over in 1942, so she'd been passed over about four years. And she controlled my mother. Now, the empathy between my mother and Aunt Ag was tremendous. My mother could be sitting in the chair, and she used to do this at home. Not do it, I mean, she was just sitting at home like we are here now, chatting away. And with a few moments, she'd just go, and a smile would come, and there was Andag. As simple as that. 